Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this will be the start of a driver series where I'm gonna be going over the key differences between a driver and an iron when it comes to technique and position. This will be a four part series and in part one, I'm gonna be talking about the setup position. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. So when it comes to driver and irons, um, the, the biggest difference between a driver and iron is the fact that with the driver, the ball is typically teed up. Now, if the ball is teed up off of the ground, we no longer want to do things to hit down on it. We actually want to learn to swing the driver head more level to the ground or slightly upwards on the ball. The other key difference is just the overall length and size of the driver. It's the longest club in the bag. So if we want to encourage the club to swing more level to the ground or slightly up on, upwards on it, we have to do things in our setup to encourage that to happen. So I'm going to be going over the key setup positions from the face-on view first and then from the side view. But before I get into the driver setup, I want to maybe review some concepts with the setup position with an iron first. That way, when I do get to explaining the driver setup position, you guys can see the difference. So when you're hitting an iron, the ball is typically on the ground. So when you t uh, set up to, uh, like say a seven iron, the ball position will just be ever so slightly to the left of center. Uh, my head will still be slightly more behind the ball to the right. But if I were to draw a line, a straight line up from where the ball is, my head would be you know, pretty much against that line or just mostly behind it. Okay, my, my weight is fairly evenly distributed, if not you know, 55% on the lead side, okay? Now, since the ball is on the ground, if we want the ball to go up, we have to do things to hit down on it. So one of the key positions to know if you are hitting down on it is to, is to pay attention to where the longest point of the golf swing is. And with an iron, typically, you'll see that longest point form after you strike the golf ball. So when I go really slowly, after I strike it, you'll see that my left arm and, and club form a straight line after impact. Now, when you have a driver in your hand and the ball is teed up off of the ground and you want to encourage the club to swing more level and less downwards, then the first thing to look at is ball position versus where your head is positioned in uh, relation to the ball. So typically, you've, you've probably heard to you know place the ball maybe inside of the left heel, okay? but you can actually be more precise than that. And what I mean is when you have your ball placed between your feet, you actually want to make sure that when you get in the posture that the ball is in line more so with your lead shoulder, okay? And um, the other thing too is that your stance will typically be wider just because this is the longest club in the bag. Having a wider stance would just help with balance. But if the ball position is more forward and your stance gets wider, then your head is going to be positioned further behind the ball to the right, okay? So having that line there, you can see Probably more space between where my head is and where that ball line is okay now the reason as to why you want the ball precisely in line with your lead shoulder is because when you make contact with the golf ball you're changing you're, you're trying to change where the longest point of the golf swing is so you can see that at the moment of impact my radius or when my left arm and club form a straight line is right at the moment of impact okay so remember that with an iron, you're trying to get that radius to form after impact, and that would signify that you've hit downwards on it. But with a driver, if you make that adjustment with ball position, okay, making, making sure that it's pretty much in line with the lead shoulder, heads further behind, when you strike it, that radius is now right at the golf ball, and that would signify that you've swung the club more level to the ground. So there's three key points to take away so far. So one is ball position in line with the lead shoulder. The stance is wider, okay? And typically it's gonna be wider than your shoulder width, okay? Now, when it comes to weight distribution, my weight is still fairly evenly distributed, um, if not 55% still on my lead side, okay? And because the ball position is further forward, heads further back, right? You're gonna see more space between where my head is and where that ball line is. So my head will be further behind the ball as well. Just on the screen quickly, I'm just going to pull up how I'm setting up from the face on view with an iron versus a driver, just so you can visually see what the differences are. 
Um, so you can see clearly what the, what the changes that I've made with driver, um, how the stance is wider, ball positions more further forward, um, pretty much in line with the lead shoulder, and then my head's further back behind that ball line. Okay, so I'm just going to go over um, the, the driver setup from the side view, but, but before I get to the driver, uh, I'm just going to go over some basic points about the setup with the 7-iron, just so that you can see the difference. So when setting up with the 7-iron, the, the first thing I kind of typically look for when it comes to setup is just where the weight is um, across your feet. Now, I, I like to see that it's pretty centered, maybe just slightly on the balls of the feet, and I never want to see the weight displaced too much into the heels um, or too much into the toes. Okay, so with it pretty centered, the next thing is just a slight bend in the knees and that you're bent enough from the waist to where your arms are hanging straight down. So in other words, like your, your hand should be resting pretty much like directly below your, your shoulders, okay, when you're handling an iron, okay? Um, the other part to take note of is with the posture in my back, um, you, you don't ever want to like arch, like arch your back, like arch your lower back or pinch your shoulder blades together just because that will actually restrict your mo mobility in the backswing. So instead of being arched, okay, and your shoulder blades pinched together, you, you actually want to flatten your lower back. So see how I actually just kind of tucked my hip like a bit more forward. So that made my lower back kind of flat. And it's completely normal for there to be, you know, a slight, a slight arch in my upper back. Um, so that'll actually make it very easy for my body to maneuver in the backswing or throughout the swing in general. But the main points with the weight in the center of the feet, slight bend in the knees, lower back is flat, okay to have arch in the upper back, but the arms are hanging really straight down kind of under the shoulders. Okay, so when it comes to driver, now there's not um, a ton of differences from the side view, okay, but there's just a few things that you, you'll have to look out for. Now, the same thing, it's the same thing with the driver um, as, as I described with the seven iron pretty much. Um, you, you don't want obviously too much weight in the toes um, or in the heels. It's gotta be pretty centered, slight bend in the knees. And you also wanna have a flat lower back, okay? And a slightly arched upper back. But when it comes to the placement of your arms relative to the shoulders, the irons, the, you want the hands kind of more directly below the shoulders. Now with a driver, because the club is, is the longest club in the bag, you actually want to position your hands slightly further outside of your shoulders here, okay? But the biggest mistake that people make with driver is just in terms of body alignment, kind of where they're pointing their shoulders, their hips, relative to where they're pointing their feet in the club face. Now, um, I mentioned uh, from the face on view how the ball positions more forward. And typically what I see is when the ball, when people move the ball position forward, they actually start to point their shoulders uh, more open or more to the left, kind of like this. So when you look at that from the side view, if I were to position myself, you can see that some players have their, their shoulder alignment pointing more open or pointed more to the left relative to where they're pointing their feet. Okay, um, I also see that their, their forearms are out of alignment as well. You can see my, my forearms are also open. Okay, so it's, it's important that as you change ball position, stance width, and things like that, that you maintain or, or just make sure that your shoulders are still parallel or fairly parallel with um, your feet and where you're aiming the face, okay? So I, I shouldn't see the lead forearm kind of underneath my trail arm. You'd want to get it so that it's pretty much hidden behind, okay? But the biggest difference is, is just that those two things. It's just making your hands a bit further outside of your shoulders and then just maintaining the, the body alignment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you want to inquire about my online programs. I will also leave a link to my website in the description box below as well, just so you can see all of the details. And if you still have some extra time, I would encourage you guys to watch this video next. And this is another driver video where it goes over uh, players who tend to slice the ball a lot with their driver. So if you feel like you are that type of player, then watching this video may give you an idea on how to solve that.